Welcome, everybody, to episode 180 of The China Show. It's so good to have you here, and we've got quite the show for you today. Um, I want to quote someone live. What, what do you want to quote? They said... Um, what? I'll just say... They said, Winston will try to come rearing out of the gate as fast as possible, keep the momentum up, and Seamilk will try to come in there and say, slow it down, slow it down. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We always do that. Yeah. What we're doing today, we're going to be talking about this forced smiling thing, as you can see in the background, that's coming in our main segment. But of course, we always start with what's new. And this is when we talk about what's new uh, with regards to China. And everybody knows about the Huawei phone. We've talked about this, but by now, I think most people have forgotten about it. If you don't know, China has a brand called Huawei. It's been mm. under uh, all kinds of scrutiny for spying on stuff. It's been banned in multiple countries. It's been uh, speculated to have ties to potentially the People's Liberation Army, right? Mm. Obviously, it does. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm, you know, sure. I'm trying to sure. be diplomatic here. But anyway, okay. they came out with a phone that was supposed to break sanctions by mm. making their own homegrown chip that goes in there, a seven nanometer chip. So couple generations behind what's out yeah the, the new iphone 15 is a three nanometer chip yes so they the <clears throat> idea was that china doesn't need to worry about sanctions because they yeah. can do everything themselves do it themselves yeah and it turns out this phone was a piece of trash um it's not that good it performs like an iphone 2018 2019 that kind of benchmark it of it's overheating overheating it's crashing yeah. lots of people having problems but there's one thing that, of course, the nationalists would never, ever admit there's anything wrong with it. They still will stand behind it, even if it burns them and whatever. But there's one thing that a lot of nationalists were doing to mm -hmm. prove that it's better than an iPhone. And this was taking pictures of the moon. The now this, Oh, yeah. The moon. <laughs> the moon. <laughs> so anyway, um, Huawei... Look, Samsung's done this as well in the past, by the way. This is probably where Huawei got the idea for <laughs> They copied the copy. <laughs> I don't think they came up with this by themselves. Samsung came up with it. What you're saying is Samsung came up with a crappy, cheap ploy, and then yes. Huawei even copied that. Yeah, they copied They thought that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. What they do is, well, here's a demonstration, and then we'll explain this what's pretty going wild. On. So this is a demonstration of the Huawei... Um, phone and this this uh, enterprising dude decided what he's going to do is uh, well let's just take a look I'll play it and then you can kind of figure out what's going on. He's got reflections of his light on the tiles of his apartment, and he zooms into it in the moon mode because there's a moon photo mode on the Huawei phones. Okay. What a mode. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> oh wow, look, it's such a clear uh, picture of the moon. <laughs> I pause it there. Yeah. So he basically, you're saying he has tiles. He yes. Has, he has just, you know, your kind of clinical looking lights on the top of his roof. Yeah. And they're shining down, making a perfect circle on the ground yeah, yeah. as a reflection. Yeah. It's, well, it's just like a light, a yeah. blurry light. Like yeah. a, The thing is, though, when you put the Huawei phone into the moon photo mode, yeah. what it does is it looks for a light source. That looks like the that moon. That it thinks is the moon. Yeah. And then it just superimposes a picture out of a database that kind of matches the... You know, yeah, so what, what it's it doing is because you guys probably know if you ever try to take a photo of the moon, it doesn't work. Yeah, try it with your phone. It's always small or blurry or terrible. Or really, any camera, yeah. unless yeah. you got a massive telephoto lens on yeah. it. Yeah. If you try to do it, it's like a feat of science or something. Mm. Nobody knows why, but it will always yeah. stay small. Yeah, it's weird. It's this massive moon. Matter. You like snap off a picture, you're like, what? You're like, Dude, check, you send it to your wife. Yeah. Like, Look at, did you see the moon? <laughs> and they're like, what? That looks like shit. Yeah, exactly. What anyway. is this pinpoint? Yeah. yeah, what is this little pinpoint? Mm. Anyway, um, so what you're telling me to simplify this to the most layman terms <clears throat> is that it when you put it in moon mode yeah it wants to tell the user basically that we're going to make it specially formulated we're going to use all this computing power mm -hmm. and the special lens and stuff to show a really clear image yeah of the exactly moon. we're going to give you a good picture of the moon because our flagship phone is better than iphones and sure like that. sure but what it does is it goes through a data bank of images that yeah. are already taken of the moon. Yeah, but like professional telescopes it. and yeah. stuff, right? That so, yeah, it's just faking it. Incredible. Now, remember, Samsung did do this too. I don't know, um, you know, what the, the deal with that is. but I didn't uh, know they did that. Yeah. yeah, they did it with one of their phones. But just so that you know, if you see the Wu Mao with all the nationalists trying to tell you that the Huawei phones are better than an iPhone because they take a good picture of the moon, mm. now you know that it's just fake. It's like this guy who's taking a picture of his tile, mm. okay, which has just got a reflection of light around light, and it turns out to be the moon. And uh, I thought that was pretty hilarious. That is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. You took a whole screen recording of it, so you can see it as his... Uh, Wow, I see he zoomed out of his reflection on his tiles there. 
When will my <laughs> reflection show? Moon, I am. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yes. Now, What's a slide you have here? This amusement park slide. Well, this is uh, the typical <laughs> construction standards that you might find in a slightly more rural area in China. Yeah. Um, if you take a look, this is a, a spiral staircase that has been installed in a house. In, Please tell me this photo is upside down. No, it, the staircase is upside down because for some reason the construction workers thought that's the way it's supposed to be. You can even see they put supports underneath the bottom stairs to hold it up as it was setting. Uh, so they put thought into this. You know, they're they like, did. we're going to install this and make sure it's held up correctly while it's all set. And you promise this is an upside down. That's it's right, because all the building materials. Yeah, look, well. it's, I'm just trying to play yeah. devil's advocate here. It's not upside down. That's that's tofu drain oh, construction. Oh my lord! It I, does look fun though. Yeah, I guess you could try it. No, you would just fall off though. You'd have to put railings. If you slid? Yeah, you just fall off. It's not like in a cartoon where you'll just go around like oh, you just could, go. You could manipulate. Oh, it. but that's not a slide. That would that's, be a shuffle. Yeah, you would just fly up the yeah. side. <laughs> you would. You go. <laughs> that's it, dude. Actually, nothing would happen. You'd, you'd stick you'd to the hit jagged it. concrete. Exactly. You'd like cut your neck smooth. on that. Yeah, you see that overlap. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be fun. Yeah. No. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, that is. Shame. Now the thing is, when you talk about um, construction workers in China. Um, uh, of which I've met many, by the way. Yes. Um, face to face in confrontations because they're drilling yep. in the middle of the night. I've had a few kinds of confrontations myself. I think everyone in China has. Yeah. Also met them in pleasant circumstances yes, too. Of course. Uh, had dinner I feel with bad them because they're like basically forced labor. They are slave class people yes, in China. Yes. It's unfortunate. They're so they disrespected. Are, they are kept on the construction sites in these shoddy sort of like. Um, we'll show you. We'll show you a little bit Poorly of a taste. Paid. Very poorly paid. Blackmailed. Held there basically um, almost against their will until the job's done. Yeah. It's a very bad situation in China when it comes to manual labor. But they're very tough people. They're yeah, very – Like they do crazy things. You see them up there on yeah. like no on a scaffolding or whatever with yeah. no safety like equipment. Balancing. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a different thing. We'll do a whole video about it. But – some of them develop very good skills. We're mm. going to show you one, which is actually looks incredibly cringe. And what he's doing is he's using his fingers to uh, to measure. Yeah, it was like a guy. It's like a level. Yeah, it's like a little, a little well, like a little measuring tape. Yeah, he's like, I need these chops to be a few inches or whatever it is. So, whoa! <laughs> I cringe. Whoa! I hope that's backwards, but it's not. Nope. Still got his finger. That's incredible. Yeah. I got to say the skill, but also Woo. just the, the sheer balls to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, oh we we're talking about bad uh, situations. Now, this, of course, is not... We're showing you a picture. This is not what you're going to find everywhere in China. No, no, no. But I think it's indicative of something. So basically, mm -hmm. what happens is look at these mass projects started. Mm -hmm. And they'll have these labor forces of thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, migrant workers Migrant coming workers, in. yeah. And they don't have a place to live, right? A lot mm. of these people, they don't have property. Yeah. So despite what you may, hear, may have heard that everyone in China owns property and stuff, these migrant workers that live in the mountains of Guizhou do not have a property in Guangzhou, sure. right? Where they go work for a season and mm -hmm. send the money back home. So what they'll do is they'll put them in these dormitories and they yeah. uh, you know a lot of the hiring process for this low-cost labor is that hey we provide your food and we yeah. provide a roof over your head and that's something you have to bear in mind um <clears throat> there's a reason why chinese people are very good at saving money yeah. and i found it very strange when i got to china that like a very low-end street sweeper or something mm -hmm. would be able to save decent amount of money mm -hmm. and you know i came from a western situation where i wasn't i was used to living paycheck to paycheck sure sure and then you see somebody doing a very low-end job that actually has a decent amount of savings or they're sending money back home or whatever. Sure. Figured it out. It's because if you go do like a slave labor factory job, they do take care of all of your expenses. Yeah. So you can be frugal. Yeah. So and basically... When you say decent... I don't want people to misunderstand when you're mm -hmm. saying a decent amount of money. You're talking about like a grand a year. Sure. <laughs> you know what sure. I mean? Like some very low salaries. <clears throat> I, I will posit it to you this way that people... A lot of people in the Western world don't have a grand in the bank. Yes, my my point is that yeah. they're they're accustomed to a very high standard of living, yes. living almost yes. luxurious. Abs absolutely, and I'm I'm not disputing yeah. that. I'm just saying I found it strange. Yeah, strange. Yeah. That people in the lowest sure. lowest rungs of society in China are still able to save a decent amount of money. Yeah, for, for China, China. Yeah, for yeah. China. Yeah. 
I but see what you're saying. Then I just wanted some yeah, 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 of course, of course. Like they, <laughs> These they, people are making like, but yes, like $500 you do, a month. You do have to understand that the um, circumstances under which they get their free accommodation of food are yes. terrible. Yes. The sushas and the yeah. tangtin that they oh go to. Oh, my gosh. And the hours? Yeah. So they, they work their ass off. They go to a crappy little dorm where they have to share a bed. Well, a room with like 10 other people, 50 other people, if they're stacked this close together. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it this bad. Usually you got like eight people in a room or something like I that. I had a Chinese friend that I spent so much time with. We were best mm. friends. And we I spent so much time with them because we were, we were always recording music together. Yeah. And I was like, it would just make more sense if we both split a, an apartment together. Yeah. It would just make more sense, right? Sure. But on his budget, like what he could afford, right? We were working around that. And we were looking what was within his price range. And it was <clears throat> shocking what like people that earn just average salaries have mm. to live in yeah pretty bad i've, I've seen it it's, yeah. aw- it's awful anyway so, this is like uh just sardines yeah it's nuts you don't want to be in this situation imagine that just mm. imagine trying to spend 10 minutes under that'd be torture yeah i mean if I you're claustrophobic you you wouldn't yeah. i'm not claustrophobic and that would be bad yeah yeah you know? anyway just to yeah. just to let you know it's not all peaches and roses and whatnot. Yeah, whoever <clears> got the top bunk is living large. No, that'll be right <laughs> up against the, against the ceiling. It's probably less space it's than... built to the yeah. tolerance yeah, of the exactly. ceiling. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Homelessness solved. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we thought we'd uh, skip to something a little more funny. So yeah. this is uh, some good Chinese humor for you. Yeah, this is a good one. So this is, um, you know, if basically saying uh, when your girlfriend's going to drive. Or wife. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. It does say that. It's Sorry, you're translating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Projection on my part there. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I mean, let's be honest though. <laughs> Do the same. That's that's that was that's some good. good good sexist humor I can get behind. Oh, it's funny. It's yeah. it's harmless. It's harmless. Of course, that's why I can get behind it. Yeah, don't get behind <laughs> it too much, bro. What? We're gonna you going down a pipeline. I don't want to see you go down. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's not go down that that <laughs> pipeline. Yes. Anyway. <clears throat> Let's continue. In fact, before we continue, we wanted to give you a shout out from our sponsor today, guys, because right. you know what? We do have a sponsor and it's incredibly good to have a sponsor considering the work we do. Yes. Uh, and our sponsor today is... Most important oh. most important thing on a bike trip. There's no audio in that, is there? Yes, there is. Oh, Sorry, I'm, I'm just cutting the audio out there. Uh, Athletic Greens. Yes. As AG1. you guys may, may know, um, they have this fantastic product, AG1, mm-hmm. which is a drink that mm-hmm. the powder you mix into water a scoop it's very delicious and you can have it every day and it basically ends up replacing all of the vitamins and minerals and doodads that you need to keep yourself healthy yes if you want better gut health increase energy yeah. immune system support you don't want to take handfuls of vitamins every day yeah uh, this this takes care of everything you, you said it better than i could it just takes care of everything you you need to take during the day or have during the day yeah. With very, very minimal effort. I mean, you're you're having it Double every morning. Exposure. You're yeah. having it every morning. Yeah, it's and good. You've, you've made it a part of your daily plan for a long time now. It's helped a lot. And you you yeah. seem healthier. You seem like well, you're I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Um, I, I got a, just like you, a, a young daughter who goes to mm-hmm. school. Yeah. And every freaking week mm. there's a new like strain of something going around. <laughs> yeah. She's coming back coughing or sure. runny nose or whatever. Sure. My wife gets sick. And I generally manage to avoid it. Yeah. Or if I get it, it's, it's mild. It's not that bad. Yeah. yeah. Whereas we used to get wrecked. Yeah. And that's ever since I started taking AG1. So AG1's I mean, anecdotal fantastic. maybe, but I really like it. And uh, it's it takes a little bit of the guilt off of my bad you know, diet and whatnot. Because at least sure. I'm getting the vitamins and minerals a growing boy needs. A growing boy. Hopefully not growing out, growing <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, it's been part of Millions of Mornings since 2010. Mm-hmm. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. And I think that's the most important key feature is that it takes under a minute to do this. Sure. You know, uh, if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's like adventure. Yeah. ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Check it out. 
Absolutely. And now back to the show. So we're, we're live this entire time, by the way. You know, a lot of people do pre-records. Yeah, that was straight up live. Of course, it was live. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to quickly switch to some garbage on the ground. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Now, I'd Same like way. everybody to pay attention to this. Okay, this litter. There's a poor guy trying to sweep it up. Poor guy. But what do you got here? You got lots of water bottles. You got some cigarette cartons. You've got some used skewers from, you know, like those Barbecue, street yeah. snack. You got sanitation wipe, you know, packets. Mala tongue skewers too. Yeah. You know, the hot pot skewers. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of like watery runoff, oily runoff from various discarded bits. This of... must be in some very rural place, right? This must be not a very important place. Okay. But no, it's the most important oh, place in Beijing. It's Tiananmen Square. Why Beijing? Why I love Tiananmen? Tiananmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, they're desecrating the square under the portrait of Mao. Oh, oh no. How what dare a shame. you? How dare you? You know, if you're going to do it, do it there. True. true. <laughs> it's a little burn so, barrel going on there. You know? uh, the reason we're showing you this is it brings up an issue. Litter is a real big problem in China. You actually forget about it a little mm. bit when you're not there. Yeah. It is everywhere. Yeah. It is shocking. It is. And there's this weird narrative that the propagandists like to do, and I'm not naming names, but like they like to say, oh, because there's such a big labor pool and unemployment is so low in China that there's street sweepers everywhere, so you never see garbage. And it's like, bro, yeah. have you <clears> left <throat> five minutes outside of a city center? Yeah. Have you looked behind any building? Mm -hmm. Have you looked in any alleyway? Sure. You know what I mean? A lot of Chinese uh, uh, people that I spoke to also have an attitude that, well, they're actually generating work for the street sweepers. I heard that hundreds of times. Did you not hear times. that? They're hundreds like, of times. Well, if I don't throw this litter there, somebody's going to be out of a job. Isn't it's that the stupidest excuse you ever heard in your life? It reminds me of like 1950s or something. Exactly, you know I mean? Well, yeah. got to put someone in a job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, here we are, mm -hmm. the lowly street sweeper. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, it does show that even in the most important places in, in China, um, the most respected, revered places... People are still going to throw their trash on the ground. Yes, and we understand that there's litter everywhere, and of course you can find garbage in the homeless encampments and all that kind of stuff. We understand. Yeah, and after a big but, music festival yes. or something, you'll always have that. But we get it. Um, the difference is is the scale in China because of the population. Oh, it's a lot of burning garbage out there. Well, it's just a lot of garbage. Like you see the beaches, how they have to mm. clean it up every time. How it's ridiculous rough. it is! It's, it's like rough. tons and tons of garbage, um, and also because littering is is more. I don't want to say acceptable, but it's more prevalent in yeah. Chinese society. Yeah, my, a lot of my friends would just roll down the window and when just they're throw, driving and just yeah. throw chuck tons of garbage out. It's like, it's, what are you doing? It's less looked down on. People yeah. don't call people out. Yeah. Even if people don't like it, they don't yeah, call Yeah, there are people out. that definitely are of like, course. don't do that. Like They don't like it, but it's like, you're less apt to get called out for doing it. Yeah, no, no one's going to call you out. you're a foreigner. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, you yeah, yeah, that, that's a bit different, yeah. But people won't call people up because yeah. the, the whole like anti-confrontational thing and yeah. worried about getting embroiled in something. Yeah. People will just let someone trust. Remember the driver in Conquering Northern China? Yeah. Man, that was frustrating. We had this oh, we, driver. We lectured him all the time. Politely so, too. Because we needed a Chinese driver to yeah. go to some of the areas we we're going to. <clears throat> and whenever we'd stop, he'd literally take plastic bottles and stuff, just throw it off in a beautiful Tissues scenic and, area. Yeah, and really he'd just throw, it'd like throw his cigarette crap and just throw his trash right out there. Big bags right. of trash. And we'd pick Sausage it up. Sausage wrappers, yeah. Yes, every piece of rubbish, garbage, plastic thing you could I think specifically of. remember I mm -hmm. said, please don't do that. And I'd pick it up and put it back in the car. Yeah. And I, we always were yeah. picking it up and saying, don't do that. And he's like, ha, 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 okay. Next minute we yeah. stop somewhere, he's thrown trash again. It's just it's the way habit. things are. It's just know? habit, yeah. you know? Anyway, so I just thought we'd show that it, it is a big issue in China. I want to say that it's the polar opposite of Japan. Yes. It's literally the opposite. Mm. They can't be two different places. Mm. Quiet. Japan's quiet. It's clean. It's sure. polite society. China's mm -hmm. loud. It's fun. Yes. It's jovial. And it's a lot of litter. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's... So. But um, just to you know, make that point. You also have to understand because the large, again, the large population, the percentage of litterers mm. are much higher, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, mm -hmm. like the numbers of litterers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now here we thought, hey, we can show you a picture, uh, footage or whatever, but how well, about we something there, we filmed yeah. ourselves? Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Beautiful place. You say that, but it looks like crap. Well, it's polluted. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Nature <clears throat> itself is beautiful. The rock formations this, are incredible. Wudangshan, right? Yeah. In Jiangxi. Yeah. 
We went there. This is we filmed this. Okay, what you see behind us. Unfortunately, a lot of the time of the year, this is what you get to this beautiful place. And one time I went, it was really pretty. Yeah. And then the other times during the year, it's always full of smoke in the air. Yeah. It's not smog factory smog per se. There are steel factories, but there's uh, most. It's mostly burning. Mm. Like the you know when they when they do the harvest. Yeah, and they burn they burn everything. Yeah. And it just ruins the air. Yeah. So we're at this beautiful scenic spot, which pretty spectacular. It is. It's very like very special. Yeah. Um, Dick Mountain. Yeah, it's nearby there. Yeah. yeah. So we're at this place. And of course, this was not even during a big holiday or anything. This was on the weekend, right? Yeah, this weekend. And of course, you get a lot of tourists, domestic tourists go there in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got this area here where people can buy food and snacks and stuff. And then they go up into the mountain. Uh, and there's like just down on the street there, there are restaurants. This is like two restaurants. Here's some proof that this is Very actually poor. our footage. This Very is actually us. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. me. A, good number of years ago just like about 2017 or something we went there Mm -hmm. for this one and you can already start to see the the litter on the ground this is just at the entrance there right it's horrendous yeah this is like a government aaaa it's like a very high designated state sponsored tourist yeah and there's literally just piles of garbage like this everywhere people's discarded instant noodles and detritus yeah and the, the, the problem I have with this is like I get that it takes a long time to get past this stage of development, and mm. I get that, and we've ne- we never got upset about it. Mm. But my problem is that China is trying to act like it's the West and the rest of the world is like failed because of their they have too much CO two and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Whereas China makes more than everyone combined, yeah, it, and they pollute absolutely. and they litter. And so here, of course, we got another scenic area, um, beautiful scenic area, and uh, in in Shandong, and uh, what's going on? Oh, oh, there's the cleaner. He just throws the trash off the side because, hey, you know what? The mountain is just there to absorb the trash, right? Mm. It's a it's a big problem. And, hey, if you've got a lot of trash, though, there is a way for you to, um, you know, get rid of your trash. Is it? Let's China. see. Yeah. This guy's got it figured out. You just take it, all right, and you just toss it in the river. That way it'll kind of float away and you don't have to see <laughs> and it Then it's anymore. gone, yeah. It's pretty out, convenient. Out of sight, out of mind, <laughs> I've dude. I've seen so many people do that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Why not just throw it in the river? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's gone. This is the kind of stuff we avoided filming when we were in China, so we didn't want anyone to look bad. Yeah. But it's a big problem. It's a really big problem. By yeah. the way, 80 to 90% of groundwater is now unusable in China. And when I say yeah. unusable, I don't mean you have to boil it. Mm. I mean you can't use it, period. At all. It's kind of a horrible, vicious cycle because mm. now you have to drink bottled water. Mm. You can't drink water out of the tap, right? So then by drinking bottled water, you're creating more plastic mm. bottles, which then go into the environment and pollute even more. I think I have to remind you of something. What? I did an extensive test on <laughs> yeah. bottled water in yeah. China, and even <clears throat> that's not up to spec. Yeah, and a lot of it's fake too. Yeah. So, yeah. So. You know, anyway, it's an unfortunate situation. Bears reminding every once in a while mm. because we see a lot of the... Um, what you may call it? Uh, this this fake propaganda Screen. about China being this just, green technology all leader. All you have to do is go there. <laughs> leader in like the environmental stuff. Oh it's gosh. it's like the worst. China is a great time. Yeah. It's a beautiful country. It's got so yeah. much cool stuff, but it is not a clean place. No. And what's happening here, by the way, is not that sinister. They're throwing they're throwing mineral water in the river, but it is also sinister because they they got they get free mineral mineral water either from the government or from something or other. And then they throw the water out so they can take the bottles to recycle them to get money. <laughs> so it's like just wasteful. Yeah, yeah. Then they have to recycle yeah. again. Yeah. But now just to remind everyone the scale of what goes on here, because <clears throat> it was a national day holiday. So you've got everybody traveling at once. Mm. And of course, when you've got these massive crowds like this, you can expect the litter to just suddenly pile up more. It's a terrible time to travel during ch- in China. We've all done it. Yep. Anyone who lives in China knows that you don't travel during the holidays unless you no. want to be stuck on the slow train with an uncle smoking next to you. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. For hours on end, standing room only, it's not fun. Um, and uh, again, we saw the Tiananmen Square, some of the aftermath, but I wanted to give you an idea of the scale of what's going on there. This is the, the flag raising ceremony at you Tiananmen imagine. Square. Imagine. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's like, insane. Wow. Yeah, you know, the the flag-raising ceremony at Tiananmen Square is something that uh, 
all all the nationalists in China, they really aspire to go mm. and see. It's like an event. They'll just like a pilgrimage. They'll mm. travel cross cross country. So during the National Day holiday, of course, if you can get there, mm. it's what you want to see. It happens every day. But of course, well, during National Day, it's like wild. Yeah, yeah. During yeah. National Day, everyone's gonna go there, and um, yeah. You know, it's something like you, every Chinese person is supposed to go do once in their life. Yes, yeah. something important. Uh, and you'll see, like, basically uh, the entire crowd pretty much has an orgasm when their flag gets to the top. You know? Okay. I mean, it's okay to love your country. Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. Just <clears throat> it's an incredibly exciting thing to witness. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> We're just waiting for that flag. Why? Are you, yeah. Why are you playing this? All yeah. Like, we we're, we don't need to watch this. No, I mean, come on. We got to share in the jovial spirit. But somebody, unfortunately, just they grabbed their flag, and they were going to rush to the flag raising ceremony. And I just had to share their story, because they didn't make it on time. Oh. So, um, <laughs> That's you know, just a quick. You know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Here's a PSA for everyone. Okay. Yeah. We do motorcycles. We've done motorcycles. We used to run a motorcycle, custom motorcycle shop in China. Mm. And one thing that I have to tell you is that if you ever have a choice, do not buy aftermarket parts yeah. from China for your motorcycles. Yeah. So, you know, China's... It doesn't matter the brand. Yeah. China's very good at making anodized, cool-looking levers and kickstarters. You say cool-looking. Well, put to, it in to, air quotes. To st- I did. Okay. For certain people. Like, you know, it'll be like a... For certain people. <laughs> you know. You mean low-taste individuals? <laughs> people sometimes... People of low taste. Come on, they're like a shiny, <laughs> lightning blue, yeah, red or green all. anodized, and they you like what? lights. I wonder if I would have a different opinion if I didn't live in China. Because Maybe. it's on the cheapest stuff. Mm. Like the worst quality stuff. But it looks, that. it's got like a different, like an eye-catching yes. look. Let's put it that way. Yeah. This is what you're seeing, by the way, that what this guy's riding is a Chinese bike. It's a CF yeah, Moto. Yeah, but it's uh, probably aftermarket. Handlebars. Probably aftermarket handle. But this is, this is the reason why we suggest against using aftermarket parts mm. from China. Mm. Take a look at this video. So the guy hits a speed, well, he hits a pothole. And his handlebars break off. Yeah, was that a bottle of Coke? That yeah, yeah, it just kind of went out. I thought he was carrying it. <laughs> that has got to be a oh shit moment because think how you yeah. grab your brakes. Yeah, you, you have to use your rear. your rear brake. But take a look how they snapped. I'm so glad he uh, mm. managed to stop. See, see, they actually snapped. They sheared yeah. clean off. Yeah. Don't buy aftermarket parts from China. Mm. Don't buy AliExpress parts from China or whatever his website. I mean, his rims got dented as well. Yeah, wow. Which is it was a big bump. Yeah. To be fair. It it is it is a big bump, yes. Yeah, it's a CF Moto. Yeah. But look at how they just sheared right off. So just remember, guys, if you've got aftermarket parts yeah. on your bike, please don't put them anywhere that's structurally important. Yeah, like yeah. foot pegs like or handlebars right or, you know, if you want to have a bling bling something or other, that's fine. If you want to have an LED light that blinks, sure. that's okay. But anything that's load bearing like that, you yeah. saw just easily that sheared right off. It's yeah. just a bit of a PSA. Total handlebars. Yeah. Another thing that's new is, do you know that China just released this amazing new uh, drone? I heard. <clears throat> and not, not like a DJI, like an actual drone. That yeah, like a, stuff. yeah, you know, like a Like a thing. fighter drone. Now, um, drone. we've very often on the show, we've, we've showcased China's outlandish claims about new technologies that they've invented, yes. like that 5G hydrogen-powered tractor. You remember yes, that one? So that was a full-on expose. Which was neither hydrogen-powered nor 5G nope. or intelligent or anything. It was a radio-controlled fake tractor with fake 3D assets. Yeah, you guys, you, our audience found that out. Yeah. <laughs> so we as a team, amazing. you guys and us, yeah. we figured that out. Well, here again, you see, they're always making these outlandish claims. Like, you know, oh, stem cell thing. Remember that whole thing in the yeah. science? Turned out that it was just fake, fake, you know? You always have to look a little closer. So now this guy... I got shared this video by someone, and I was like, let's take a look. There's a guy, X-Jet, and I guess what he does is he pays attention to jet technology and stuff. Sure. So let's, we're going to watch a little bit of his video, um, and you're going to see why. Let's take a look at this story from the, was it the um, China Morning Post or something? I don't know. I can't remember where it was. Anyway, um, it's about a new kind of drone out of China. Now, don't believe everything you read. Because I, as long-time viewers of this channel will know, I've done a lot with pulse jet engines and pulse looked at pulse detonation engines. I have been keeping up with the research and the development of this technology. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, someone's 
you know, someone's having a joke because it says here, explosive engine test with drone could propel China to supersonic age. Now, the big thing about this drone is it's rotating detonation engine. This is rotating detonation engine, otherwise known as an RDE. The concept here is that there's no moving parts. It's like a pulse jet, but instead of the thing sort of pulsing off and on, it creates a, a spinning wave of combustion in a tube in the exhaust. So it's, it creates its own compression, produces higher combustion efficiencies. And yeah, there's a lot of things that make it really, really good. But the problem is it's just not simple. It's really not a simple thing to do. But these people are claiming that they've got this, this drone here with this RDE in it, a rotating detonation engine in it. And I look at this, Hang on, what's that at the back? Oh, let me see if I can blow this up a bit. I just noticed yes. this. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. um, can I do this on live on stream? Can I blow this? I can. <laughs> oh, no, look at this. Look, look, there's a turbine. There's a turbine <laughs> engine on the back of this thing. Really, seriously, this is a conventional RC model turbine engine on the back of it. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, something for a remote-controlled uh, airplane engine. They stuck yeah, it on they there. They just can't make anything real. It's no. almost like it's a psyop to make us think that it's all crap. Because, yeah, I'm not going to bore you with the whole video. You can go watch it. Did, yeah. we, did we link it? Yes, I just Are you, yeah, I put okay. it in the bottom of the... It's in the bottom of the description. X-Jet. Yeah. yeah, X-Jet. So you can go watch the whole thing. But basically, according to the report, it had its maiden like test taxiing around and stuff. Obviously, it's being powered by this... A turbine engine that just makes it move around so that they can get camera footage of it moving and then they can claim that it's this very advanced technology and it has a couple of purposes number one of course they can then get funding from the government you know and they've just been, like that tractor yeah yeah exactly they've been set a goal by the government hey if you can pull this off you're going to get like even more they're going to give you money so they have to produce something i believe this is a 5g ai drone yeah it is <laughs> But it's just funny to see them keep doing this kind of thing. So, just a second. Yeah. What was what were they claiming again? Just it's in like layman's RDA. terms. It's a it's a very advanced kind of uh, I guess jet propulsion, which basically uses explosions in a like in a sequence to go forward rather than a turbine. So it doesn't need any mo moving parts. And in fact, I'll fast forward a little bit because NASA has a working prototype of this, which he showed as well. I'll fast forward through his thing. And that's what it looks like. It's massive. It's very complicated. Mm. You can see all the different lines feeding in. And it's a, it's a very so, complicated process. You, you would not be able to miniaturize it that easily into a drone like Yeah, I was going to say, they're claiming to take this very advanced technology and then have shrunken it down into well, a Well, made military, it into a drone, yeah. Military drone. yeah. You know, all I, I hear this complicated explanation, but all I hear is just nonsense you know what i mean like oh what what kind of nonsense are you talking about i just hear i don't know yeah yeah i kind of like hear that, that yeah. too yeah because yeah. <laughs> you know anyway the fact of the matter is <clears throat> that it's a very unreliable and new technology and it flames out and it has all sorts of problems you know what china has a prototype of it too oh do they yeah but i love how china's prototype literally has pvc piping can you see up there? It's PVC. <laughs> it's got PVC like, you it's know, like a I mean? Rube Goldberg. Project. Yeah, it's like PVC like to like pour water on it to keep <laughs> it cool, and then it also um, he showed footage of it running, and the Chinese one eats itself. Like you can Does see it, oh. metal metal particles start flying out because it's actually eating itself up, and then oh it dies. Oh my goodness! So wait a minute. What? Yeah. So they're claiming to have invented this. What? What was their source? <laughs> their source. That's quite. My easy. source is that I made it the. F you know what I kind of want to tell these guys? Hong, hong, hong. To hell with you. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. The honorable I, magician has arrived, guys, yeah. after all this time. Exactly. Anyway, I'd suggest go watch the video. But again, it just it, the fact that they have the balls to make these wild claims all the time. The it, chios, you mean. The chios. Yeah, exactly. The chios. It actually shows you, like, with the whole Huawei 7 nanometer chip thing as well, how they just go out and make outlandish claims. This so is how it is. There's actually a research group working on, uh, again, I'm not going to yeah. quote them until it's set in stone, uh, but they are speculating that it's not, mm. you know, how the whole breakthrough is that if it was 7 nanometer, it still wouldn't even be that big of a breakthrough because it's still yes. old generation technology. There's speculation from this research group now that it might not even be 7 nanometer technology. It's just 14 nanometer yes. technology that's yes. been kind of tweaked to look yes. like 7 and, nanometer. And run 
run faster. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, the overheating. <laughs> yeah, therefore the overheating. And, you know, they probably tweak the... Just like, you know when you get those fake, like, 10 gigabyte memory mm. sticks or whatever mm. from China, but it's a 256 one that's been, like... Ask me how the, I know. And the, yeah, the code, the code is, like, written to just tell you when you put it in that it's 10 gigs. I bought hundreds of them to give to all my students to, to put all the class materials on and then some bonus little free games, like homebrew games and yeah, stuff, yeah. just as a little treat. Yeah. And all of them were fake yeah they were like two meg or something ridiculous <laughs> yeah, barely yeah. most of them didn't work yeah i hate that a lot they made of sand yeah it's yeah. horrible anyway so that's just another of the never-ending uh false claims and i'll give you an update on the whole uh that research group thing when they yeah, finish when we study. get the thing yeah. yeah but you have to remember that china is the land of shortcuts and facades okay mm -hmm. and they will put things out there because it serves a purpose it serves a purpose to not only make the rest of the world think like, oh, wow, China's ahead. Like, we really should invest. We really should get, you know, but it's also to placate um, the nationalists to say, look how powerful we are. And of course, they're higher up so that they can get more funding and stuff. It's fake. Yeah, it's fake. It's fake. It's all fake. Mm -hmm. It's usually fake. It's usually fake. So when a big claim comes out of China, you have to treat it with a pinch of salt, maybe like a cup of salt, all right, until a you get, yeah, you, until you get yeah. real empirical mm. evidence, you know what I mean, a good cup of salt, <laughs> you know what I mean, it pours the gas up your nose, yeah, yeah, it's radioactive as well, because all the Fukushima, <laughs> yeah, it is Fukushima, yeah, anyway, um, let's see what we got next coming up here, um, I just got to fast forward past the jet propulsion thing, uh, do suggest watching the video, by the way, yeah, we linked it for a reason, mm -hmm. and, oh, I know what we got next, uh, we're about to, we're we're about to go into our uh, main segment of the show, soft power hour. But before we do, we have to show you a little something here. Get us out of here. Um, Bye for now. You're going go. to tourist sites in China sucks. Yes. Look, that's the Great Wall. Do you yes. want to be there? That looks like it's going to collapse. It is giving me PTSD. If you're you suicidal, would be a psycho. if you're suicidal, you travel during the New Year. That, you know, like a tribal skirt type of thing that men would wear that's not pants. <laughs> okay, I don't like this guy ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like cried because of the sheer beauty and scale of the whole thing. Wow. This just looks like depression hell right here. <laughs> I wanted my money back. This is what you see. This has got to be like, look at what am I looking at here? This has got to be the most depressing thing in the whole world. He really did just believe that Mao was God. And he gave me a shirt to put on and I had to stand like that. This is accurate though, because the only thing the Communist Party ever did was sit around. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, uh... That was Shaban Ho. For those of you who don't know, we have a Monday show. It's a VIP show. And um, we talked about the worst tourist destinations you could possibly go to. Let me just... Like... We had a bunch more, though. That's just a preview clip. Yeah. I'm just trying to match oh, my yeah. Hand. So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, so uh, we'd love for you to join us if you have the means. You can head over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and join the Shaban Ho tier. And uh, every Monday, you know, it's, it's a live show just like this. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's different. Uh, it's more personal, and we talk about things that we normally can't talk about. VIP, VIP yeah. club it, for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It's stuff we can't talk stuff about. Stuff that here. crosses the line for, for yeah. YouTube. So, yeah. you know. Here's the line. Here's the China show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just on the here's, line. Here's Xiaoban, though. Yeah, exactly. We have like vote <laughs> clips of. Oh, yeah. You know, awesome the, stuff. That cross the line. So you got to vote whether you want to see it or not. You know, that kind yes. of thing. You're definitely going to want to see it. So go to patreon.com slash ADB podcast. Join us at the Xiaoban Ho tier. And guess what? You don't have to just watch it live. You get access to every other episode we've ever done. Yeah. It's not, you know, I, I can't say when people are, and I'm not calling anyone out specifically, when they do patrons, they're like, go over there and you'll get early access to my, I used to mm. do this. You mm -hmm. get early access to our videos. No, no, no. no. We, want, we don't like that. Mm. If you're going to pay money to us, we want to give you something. So we make a whole nother show yep. that you can only see there. Yep. It's kind of awesome. It is great. We love it. All right, guys, so now it's time to move on to Soft Power Hour, which is our main segment of the show, uh, where we talk about how China's trying to change your mind through soft power. And the this time around, well, we're going to talk about this. did was sit around. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to talk about this kind of creepy smile thing. Let me get to the beginning of it here. All right. Sit around. <laughs> Why are we showing footage here of North Korea? Wait, this is China. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, well, let's take a look at this hmm. footage first, okay? This is all, you know, the Asian games. I do, yeah. The segregated games that are just... Stop with that. Enough. Recently come along. What, what are you talking about? Hey, I think I got something here for you. I didn't see anything particularly intelligent around here. <laughs> anyway. We then made it. Then, then made, made it. it. So anyway, we got the segregated games, the Asia games. 
Winston calls it the segregated games because he thinks that only people in Asia can go to only it. Only Asians can, and only smart Asians. This is the first oh, yeah, smart Asian smart, games. It was, they, yeah. Johnny called it the sm <laughs> first smart Asian game. Yeah, I know. So it's uh, <laughs> it's only so for the, it's So if you're a mathlete, you know, yeah. you can join. Yeah, it's um, only intelligent sports. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like you know? It's like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, back on track. So um, during like all the opening ceremonies and the talking and stuff, most people might not pay attention to this, mm. but now we are going to pay attention we to will. it. Look at the poor people Host, standing in the, the back. Hosts, okay. or whatever they are, like the. That is not a wax doll or a robot. That's a human being. Okay, we'll get more into those guys, but the fact of the matter is that these people have to study relentlessly on how to smile. They go to these special like training camps on how to smile and they have to learn how to hold a smile for hours on end at times all right so i do want to i do want to preface this with something because this mm. is kind of a new development that people are talking about but mm -hmm. this has been around in china for a long time there's no audio on this right no no okay cool so there is i think if you've noticed if you've taken a flight in uh really anywhere around the world you get all kinds of different people that work on the flight as a uh what is it called an airline host or hostess? Flight, flight, flight attendant, attendant right yeah. and what you'll see is people from all walks of life right Big, small, different races, different backgrounds, right? But if you're in Asian countries, specifically in China, it's a certain type of person that can work as a flight attendant. And there is yeah. a reason for that. Mm -hmm. There are camps and universities that you must pass to become a flight attendant. Yes. It's not considered a me even a medium or low-end job. It's, it's like a pretty high-end job. It's like a finishing school. Yes. So it's pretty insane. They learn this kind of stuff where they have to train their facial muscles to be super happy. Well, you have to stand there with a stick in your mouth this, yep, for crying out loud. And, you know, Very North Korea. Out. Yeah. Very North Korea. Uh, but it's getting, it's cro doing is crossover now. It's mm -hmm. crossover into not just, uh, you know, like the, the flight attendant thing. Yeah. Are you doing the smile shit? Mm, oh, trying to, rep to like replicate that. what they're doing. I feel like mm. you're you're getting bad influence here. Yeah. They do this <laughs> in all kinds of presentations or Olympic ceremonies or mm -hmm. just when people are like lined up in a in a in video footage for live stuff. It's getting worse. Yeah, it's getting more prevalent. Very more North Korea. I I think it has the opposite effect of what it's supposed to have. It makes to be me honest. sad. Doesn't it? No, it creeps me out. Yeah. You know, I'm like so yeah. healthy. Yeah. Look at big. her eyes. Look at look, her. Look, look at when the... I do this. Like, you might think she's pretty, right? That's fine. But mm -hmm. if I do this... <laughs> what if I did this on camera? I mean, I think you guys are looking at these people mm -hmm. as you're used to seeing them kind of not moving. But mm -hmm. you know us personally, right? What if we're just like this the whole time? Because they're trained to do this. We're presenters right now, yeah. dude. Yeah. We're presenting something sure, on camera. Sure. Make us big. Here we go. Let's present. Okay. Ready? Welcome to the China Show. Today, we're going to talk about the most Chinese things. We do this the whole time. That's terrible. You got to hold You have to do this the whole. You have to talk like this. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's it hurts, creepy, dude. It hurts. It's creepy. I'm but sore. Take a look at this woman in uh, like Kill for instance me. in front. Yeah, look at <laughs> it's. Kill me. <laughs> it's awful. Imagine having to sit there and smile for and they, hours. Oh, they have, and, to have this thing too. Yeah, we forgot the pin thing. They'll put pins yeah. in their collar. Well, that's for the, for the army. That's for the army, yeah. But I mean, like, she looks like she's in pain, not enjoying herself, and not happy. Is that so? It has the opposite effect to me. Like a natural smile would go a lot longer. You know what I mean? Anyway, so here you can see. These poor people in the background have to sit through these monologues. Okay, so here you've got. So, can we explain? I gotta explain something. Mm. In China, we have like a CCP official or anybody that's important, usually yeah. a CCP official. They're look, it's the same people, by the way. Look, yes, another yes. guy comes up for another monologue. They will do monologues for hours, dude. Yes. Hours. And yeah. people will be sleeping, but these people behind them have to stand there like this the whole time. Look at those poor people. Okay, you can see the, them flanking either side. They have to stand like that for the entire like opening monologue ceremony. I mean, <laughs> it, I was slipping there. Yeah, I just um, yeah. This could be something you could play at home. See if you can hold a smile for just a make my kids do this. Yeah. when they're being annoying. Look, imagine like the guy who was there had to go off. This turban dude came next. Okay. Yeah. And now he's standing there having his thing. Those poor people, they don't. Oh, move. I saw one dude. He started slipping a little bit because oh, as you did. soon as he do show the sign off again. Okay, the sign off. Right? Yeah, with the, the okay. red turban guy. So see the guy on the to his left. Mm -hmm. He's like he's full on right, but then he yeah. signs off. Watch, he starts. 
He's like, it goes a little bit. Oh, lower. you got like a little. Like a, he's like, uh, he's like, so, I'm so close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, so you, you must, you must tire out. Yeah, because like th- this is a long opening ceremony, right? You know, this guy's just talking bullshit about GDP or something. Yeah, like China's increased development with the Taliban. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's Afghanistan. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know. China and Afghanistan formed a long bond with the Taliban. Yeah. We love funding terrorism. Yeah. So we thought we would explain to you what's going on. You know, that's the whole point of the yeah. segment. If you were to spot in any kind of Chinese uh, event, you see these smiling Looks like wax figures in the background. So bad. Yeah, it's now you understand why that they actually get taken to school. Yeah, they learn that there's consequences. You could lose your bloody job or you whatever. Get fined. Yeah, you get fined. A lot fined. of times you get fined, and that's mm-hmm. crazy. You might not believe this. You get fined in some of these situations because mm-hmm. you'll sign a contract, yeah. a performance contract, mm-hmm. and if you didn't perform like they they wanted to, like with that fake smile the whole time, <clears throat> yeah, then you are fined and you have to pay money to the boss. Pretty wild. Now, if you ever look at those big parades that they have, the military parades, the soldiers also have to do something similar. Yep. But it's not smiling. It's they have to wide their, make their eyes as wide as possible. Yeah. If you want to see something really uncomfortable, We've watch... covered that. Yeah, you watch the Chinese military parades because they strain their eyes open as wide as they can. And wicked for high. Yeah, and they have to be like in this very awkward, awkward position, um, you know, and it's... They gotta do it. Gotta do it. It's Are just you screwed? super unnatural, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I could barely do it for that ten seconds when I was making a joke. Yeah, awful. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. there's this whole there's whole university mm-hmm. set up for mm-hmm. performance arts like this, and it's very common. It's very Soviet Union, which totally North Korea copied from the Soviet Union. Sure. Which totally <clears throat> China is now retroactively copying for their stuff. Well, you know, when I worked at the rapist school, right? Yeah. I knew this was going to come out. No, he had the same. He had like a, a training course they would all have to do. Yeah. Where they would learn how to like sit down on a chair it's in a certain thing. way. Yeah. You know, and they'd learn how to. Also, they had to do that fake smile like yes. this. It was part of it, dude. It was. It's all part of the same thing. And they, like you said, they used to get fined. Yeah. So if, and he would have like basically narcs working all over yeah. the place, right? Like spies. So other members of stuff, they'd get rewarded if they ratted out anyone who wasn't smiling or whatever. So when you've got someone sitting there, like, coming into the office, right, at the reception, and if she's not smiling the entire time, right, the entire How time. How are you? Welcome. She could say, oh, she didn't smile, and then she gets docked money off of her pay. Yeah. And that's how it works. You knock them out. Yeah. Like and then that person smile. gets a little bit of money. Yeah, a little percentage. Yeah, a little percentage. It was pretty a horrible, horrible situation. Horrifying. It's like 1984. It was a really bad situation. Yeah. It's like, I got fined because we were supposed to wear this like pin on our jacket or whatever. Like a little lapel pin. And mine was like skew or something. I got fined. You know? I'm like, what the hell? I went to Crazy Catholic school. Stuff. And if you <clears throat> didn't tuck your shirt in for your uniform, right? If you didn't tuck your shirt in or it was like a little bit out, you had to go write your name on the board for detention. And I, I tucked my shirt in, but it was like a little bit out. And this nun, she was so mean. Yeah. She was so mean. And she goes, go write your name on the board for detention. So I went in there and I wrote someone else's name on the board. Oh, okay. Did they, <laughs> did they catch you out? No. Oh, okay. I, but I did get detention a few more times. Mm. One time it was because I had a Tic Tac in my mouth. Because <laughs> of a Tic Tac? Yes. Isn't that sad? It's so pretty, strict pretty it sad. It's yeah. ridiculous. Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. You put, you got Jeremy in trouble? Yeah. That sucks, dude. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. If he was a bad guy, I wouldn't mind. He could have ended up bad. But he didn't, though. I have no idea. All right. Poor Jeremy. Jeremy spoke <laughs> oh. <laughs> today. Yeah. No, no it's, it wasn't a situation Yeah, you like created that. that situation. No, actually, we're, we're fine with it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right, excellent. So um, I guess that's soft power for you today, guys. So let's yes. move on to Wu Mao Corner. Let us do that. What do we got in Wu Mao Corner today? We got some funny oh, stuff for you coming up. Delicious stuff. Dude, we broke this. Actually, you just... You just explain what this nonsense is that we we did on the show a little while ago yeah so a little while back i found this uh propaganda channel yes um and it's so funny it's called Mm -hmm. miss wow tech Mm. and what china tried to do was make one of these fake accounts on Mm -hmm. facebook with millions of followers but each post that she was making was getting like a handful of clicks right yeah they get i don't know what they did and i don't know why facebook won't remove the millions of fake followers yeah they won't remove them no. for some reason. Anyway, um, 
they they got called out obviously and it was part of some expose i can't remember if it was new york times or one of those other publications it was in there and so what they did is renamed her first she was called techie rachel yes and they renamed her to miss wow tech right mm -hmm. And she's been, you know, she's done interviews with some of the pro CCB shills and stuff. Oh, but yeah, she yeah. works for the she the works Chinese for the state, state government. Yeah. But recently, media. what they've been trying to do in their propaganda push is a lot of AI five G yes. stuff. Again, get ready for some fake AI, guys. So recently, if you notice on her feed, <clears throat> all you see. By the way, she doesn't have a government label here. YouTube, wake up. Yep, she's um, government. Yes. Anyway, these all are. Conf AI Confucius, mm. and it's actually a part of a really sinister plot right now. China's I got a campaign under Xi Jinping called Tell a China Story Well. Yeah. And what this is trying to do is really co-opt China's past that was destroyed under the Communist Party. Correct. The current government. Yes. And what they'd like to do is kind of reclaim all that stuff. And be like, yeah, China's history is beautiful and strong, but it's actually because of us, the Communist the CCP, Party. Yeah. So they're co-opting <laughs> freaking Confucius. Yeah. Right? He's got nothing to do with the Communist Party. No, so what they've done is they've created this fake AI, and I, and I say AI they say very AI, liberally. It's not AI at all. They, they've come up with this fake AI thing where they make Confucius do Chinese propaganda. Right. Right. So she'll ask him a question, and he comes up with some ridiculous thing. But he has, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson's voice. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. We've, we covered this yeah. last time. So let's take a look at one of these examples, yeah. Hello, Confucius. How do you see the impact of modern technology and social media on people? I can hear you, my child. Modern technology and social media, like all tools, are neither inherently good nor bad. It is how they are used that determines their value. Is it not a pleasure, having learned something, to try it out at due intervals? Is it not a joy to have friends come from afar? Technology provides an avenue for continuous learning and the joy of connecting with friends from distant places. However, one must also be cautious. The superior man is modest in his speech, but exceeds in his actions. In the age of social media, where words are plentiful, it's essential to ensure that our actions align with our words and that we do not become consumed by the desire for recognition or validation. Balance and moderation are key. Every day I examine myself once and again one should also reflect upon the use of technology and social media, ensuring it serves as a tool for growth and connection rather than distraction or vanity. Okay, so turns out there's a lot of these channels that use this exact same technology. It's basically a photo that moves. Yeah, but remember, she's putting this forward as an AI yes. thing. And before we even get to this, you put in the interview that she did with Confucius. Just wait a sec. I just wanted okay. to point out that this is not an, even a novel thing. No. These are channels that are not Chinese propaganda. They're yes. just random channels. Mm -hmm. And they use this program that basically takes a photo mm -hmm. and then, or, you know, it actually has some avatars and built in and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's decent software. Mm -hmm. What it does is it... Uh, you can type you, can you type, type out like what it, what you wanted to say and it just you put a picture there and it it's not animates AI. it. No, it's There's not AI. AI. It's just a normal, you know, it's app. Like old internet shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, this is apparently like the 78th generation Confucius's yeah. ancestor. Uh, what is the opposite of ancestor? Um derivative? <laughs> What's what? <that? laughs> You know you've got your ancestors, right? What are you? You're his, you're their predecessor? No, no that's what is before. it? You're their He's like a derivative. Offspring. Oh, yeah, but he's offspring of offspring of offspring, you know? Whatever. You water it down, you get he's a derivative. Pro <laughs> processor. <laughs> what I mean? Processor. <laughs> what, pro what, no, what do you even call that? Look it descendant. up. Man. A descendant. A descendant. Yes. <laughs> what, what are we? Are we, are we regarded? Yeah. Well, I'd say descendant, derivative, whatever. Derivative. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what? Is he also the mean and the average? <laughs> no, you know, like you dilute something, yeah, make it, yeah. a copy of a copy or whatever. Yeah. You never know. Like, so it's tentatively, this guy, whether it's true or not, that's hard to tell. But this guy's apparently, um, you know, Confucius's 78th generation descendant. Whatever. Anyway, this is CCP crap. But now, this is important because yes. this woman, um, this uh, Miss Wow, well. Techie Rachel, goes up to Confucius's descendant. Right. Okay. Some government with, thing. Yeah, with this freaking app okay yes. and this is what she shows well, it's not necessarily an app it's just, it's just a, a video it's a video it's just of confucius a video that she has made using this app and it's implied and it's what you have to understand ahead of time it's implied that he is going to be able to speak to confucius through ai yeah just just watch this yeah. and you'll see hey guys i am world's first ai confucius i am now powered by confucius true idea what is your question well that's really cool can you send this uh, software to me uh? I can send you via WeChat link. Fantastic. This is, uh, this is amazing, you know. 
I, I believe these, um, the, the AI technology can really help uh, to promote uh, the traditional Chinese culture, especially about uh, the Confucian. Uh, the Confucianism. Yeah, everything yeah. you said is AI generated, but yeah. using the mind and the knowledge of Confucius himself. Uh, excuse me, what yeah. did she say? She said it's powered by it's by AI, the but... mind <laughs> and knowledge of Confucius. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about. Yeah. That. Exactly. Cool. I really like it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask him one question: mm -hmm. if he's still with us. I don't think uh, he's gone. I think he's here. Do you notice he's, the cut uh, there is very everywhere. important. You yeah. know, that, that's what I believe. Yeah. I want to ask him his power, his yeah. energy, his spirit, you know, his soul. You know, I believe he's here. He never been gone. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So much. Thank, Thank, you, you. Thank you. So it's interesting, isn't it? That yeah. he he uh, he seems fairly genuine. He's that guy like very, seems fine. Yeah, he's like yeah. he wants to know and he wants but he wa he thinks it's softer <laughs> that he can ask. He goes, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, he thinks because the way she put it forward, yeah. so this is an A the first world's first AI Confucius Because power. that's what China's putting forward yeah. in the pro this propaganda campaign. There's like f the dozens of these videos now. Yeah. Yeah. And you're supposed to believe that Confucius is now in AI and you can interact with yeah, it. Yeah, so you can ask Confucius a question. Yeah. He's going to give you an answer. Guess what? That's not true. Well, wait a minute. I think we have a little message from Confucius first. Yeah, yeah. What did right? Confucius what have, does he to have to say? say? Let's see. The worst thing that ever happened to modern China is the CCP. I am deeply disappointed in what China has become under the leadership of the Communist Party. I feel that our ancestors would also be disappointed in the past glory and respect that is no more. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it turns out this is a free trial. Anyone could do it. Software from America. Including us. Yes. And everyone on the internet that's already mm -hmm. done this. You could make this Confucius dude in that voice say, I... Twiddle poodles on my little finger. Yeah. It doesn't And, and I do. <laughs> sure. uh, it's one of my favorite hobbies. Anyway, yeah. you understand that they used a free trial of this software, <laughs> the stock assets. You can put any picture in, mm -hmm. any picture in. It'll any picture you morph like. the mouth and you can type in whatever you want. Yeah. So it's not AI. China burn again. <laughs> CCP. Sorry, we got gotcha. you. It's lame. It's fake. What a surprise. Busted yet again. The land of shortcuts and facades. The fact that on state media, because Tech Wow Rachel thing is oh, it's state, state media. media. It's China Daily. She went up to the freaking derivative of no, Confucius. Descended. Descend he's, you know, he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. And his English is good. Yeah, too. it's really good. Doesn't matter. Derivative can still be good. Okay, anyway. Anyway. Descendant. The descendant of Confucius. I mean, dude, like, how do you prove that? Let's just, let's go with the benefit of the doubt. Okay, yes. Because it so, makes our case but better. <laughs> she, <laughs> she went up. You know, this crazy neighbor who used to think he was like the descendant of Charlemagne. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> what, a, what a thing to be a descendant of. <laughs> so random in South Africa. I know. Anyway, I know. He had like old charts and everything. <laughs> let's get back on track. This guy. Okay. So <laughs> he, she goes to the descendant of uh, Confucius, Confucius, shows him this. It has the audacity. Yeah, this is Confucius AI. And he's like, oh, that's amazing. That's really AI cool. technology is great. It's going to help people understand, understand our China. Chinese culture. I want to ask it a question. You know, Cut. can't ask it a yeah, question. Yeah, you can't. But I mean, the fact that they're willing to go and trick Confucius's and descendant. It <laughs> there's there's two things. First of all, they lie. You're lying to Confucius' <laughs> yes. descendants. How immoral is that? Mm. That's the second thing is to be using Confucius's image to promote Chinese propaganda through China Daily is pretty effed up. Yeah, it's pretty gross. You can with this app type anything you like. So what's going on here is they pre-render the video of whatever his answer is. Okay. Yeah. And then they just ask the question. So yes. you know, like for instance. Uh, what we we created this little clip, obviously. Yeah, I mean um, anybody can. It's just a free so, software. So so let's pretend thing. we're Chinese state media now, and we're like, you know, what? we've gone. got this. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We get it Thank set you. up. The worst thing that. It oh, sorry. Uh, so yes, China has this new amazing AI. Sorry, I got to get it exactly there. <laughs> spirit, I'm doing this again. You know, his soul, you know. I believe he's here. He he's never been 15 minutes. Gone. Babe, that's for yeah, sure. dude. I'm yeah. sure he's got more than that. He's Thank you. Of, Thank you. Confucius. <laughs> so, guys, China's created this amazing new AI. Yeah. You can ask it anything you like. It's, it's Confucius. Whoa, cool. Let's ask him a question. Okay. Um, Confucius, I would like to know, what do you think of the current leadership of China? And what is the worst thing that's ever happened to modern China?
Worst thing that ever happened to modern China is the CCP. I am deeply disappointed in what China has become under the leadership of the Communist Party. I feel that our ancestors would also be disappointed in the past glory and respect that is no more. Amazing yeah. AI. I can't believe that AI. Mm. You can ask it anything Dude, and it'll just ask spit it, it right it out. Just answers. You know what I actually I want to ask it? I want to ask it a question. What's that? Uh, what's the worst thing that happened to China? <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, okay? Can I ask you a question? Sure. What's the worst thing that ever happened in China? <laughs> That's what I asked. All right, well, we'll ask you. Can you can ask anything. Watch, I'll ask something else. Okay, you're going to ask something else yeah. this time. Okay, hang on. Got to get it to the right Never spot. Never been gone. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So much. Thank, you, thank you. The worst. In your opinion, <laughs> is the worst thing that ever happened in China the CCP? thing that ever happened to modern china is the ccp ah, yeah that's a that's amazing See, dude. he really answers wow. your questions very pertinent this is really good yeah dude china you gotta start making some more clever shit for us to take down you know do you think that the ancestors would be proud of china as it is uh confucius ai confucius i am deeply disappointed in what china has become under the leadership of the communist party I feel that our ancestors would also be disappointed in the past glory and respect that is no more. Honestly, I think we did a way better job than their... Ours is higher <laughs> res. It's more yeah. clear. Oh, yeah. Neil's absolutely. voice comes out nice and crisp. By, by the way, smoky. that was just a bloody <laughs> stock voice that's the in the app. The trial. It's a free trial voice. One of the... They give you like kind of 10 was, voices yeah. to choose from. So they're just using a stock free trial bullshit. It's an thing American to company, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it is an American which company. Which is shocking that they're pretending. This is, oh, that's a third nail in the coffin. Yeah. They're, number one, they're using Confucius to do Chinese propaganda. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're pretending it's AI when it's just a freaking morph, morphing the face. Yeah, it's space just a app dumb thing. little thing. Yeah. And number three, they're, it's not their AI because they didn't make it. It's not AI. You know, it's, it's not, not okay. their software. Number four, it's, it's not, not even their, their software. software. Yeah, it's freaking American company. Come on. It's lame. Wow. It's all lame. But again, shortcuts and facades. You put something out there, you claim that it's something. Most people don't question it. They're just like, holy shit, China's really good at AI. Look, yeah. they got an AI Confucius. Yeah. How many people out there genuinely, and I'm asking you right now, I know you're our audience, but when we first showed this, obviously we debunked it. Yeah. But did you not maybe for a minute think, this is cool. China's got a Confucius AI. Yeah. I mean, I would like that to be true. Yeah. I would like to be able to talk to a Confucius yeah, AI awesome. and ask him questions. Yeah. But I mean, I guess, think about it. Your average person out there who's not connected to China in any way, doesn't really know what's going on. If they were to see this pop up on YouTube or in an article or something about China has... A Confucius AI that you can ask questions, they'd probably believe it. I think even bigger than that, if we zoom out, yeah. right? It's important to focus on why they're doing this. And it's important mm. to understand why it's important that we call it out as being fake. Because there are billions and billions of dollars flowing into China. And t thousands of studies that are saying China's AI has superseded the West. Yes. And America's behind. And China's leading the way in AI technology. And you understand their examples of this AI technology is going to be what they show through state media and yeah. their propaganda. This is part of It's it. an American company face morphing app, and they're claiming it's the world's first Confucius AI. So it's not just yeah. a gimmick. It's not just a little joke that we're trying to show you yeah. guys. This isn't some personal t t YouTube mm. channel. You're this is a tech right. correspondent for the Chinese government, propaganda mm. department, yep. China Daily, mm -hmm. and they're showing the prowess of China's AI. And you have to understand that that implicates tons and tons of investment sure. and hype and all this kind of like uh, almost like demoralizing propaganda that China likes to use about how, yeah. how far ahead they are. And this is true because when they <clears throat> go out there and they put out statistics and you'll find statistics in like very well-known media outlets that yeah. say China is the world leader in AI implementation. Mm. This is going to be included, mm -hmm. like you say. Mm -hmm. So they'll say China has the most AI yeah. uh, examples or implementation. So they're going to say, this is part of it, this AI, that other fake AI we, we talked about, that crash test dummy, yep. the AI 5G tractor, which isn't yes. real, this AI, this AI. So you take all of these things, you lump it together. Yes, there's probably some real yes. quantum computing stuff or whatever in there that's worthy of you know saying it's yep. good. But if you stripped away all this fake crap like this, China would not be the leader in AI. It wouldn't even be the follower in AI. I saw something in the chat too that's right in line with that. They said, well, patents don't lie. 
guess what? They do. They do. We exposed that in the last episode. Maybe you should have <clears> tuned <throat> in, Mr. Wumo. Because yeah. patents do lie. They exploit the copyright and patent offices yes. in America. And there's currently something being investigated on that. At least some think tanks are doing some stuff yeah. with it. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, yeah. I'm deeply right. disappointed so now... in what China has become under the leadership of the Communist Party. Thank you, Confucius. You know, we should probably get AI Confucius to have a little say every once in a while just on the do, channel. She's about hundreds of shorts. Should be like, Except, Conf- you know what? We'll buy the software. Yes. <laughs> That's the difference. We can ask AI Confucius we'll what he it. thinks of, you know, the shills or something yeah. like that. You know, he'll have a couple of things to say. Hey, and if Confucius says it, you got to pay attention. You got to do it. It's it, like you say, it's kind of immoral. It is. It's kind of like if I took Nelson Mandela yeah. or something and made him say, say whatever you outlandish want to say. shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I feel that our ancestors would also be disappointed in the past glory and respect that is no more. Mm-hmm. Anyway. World view time, guys. This is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regard to China. <clears throat> and China has a uh, an embarrassing situation on their hands. Incredibly oh, embarrassing. Yikes. So, yeah. You want to start this out? It's a bit of a bitter pill to swallow, this one. Mm. You guys might have heard the submarine scenario, the whole submarine deal. So yeah, basically in in layman's terms, they trapped their own submarine with their own submarine uh, people. In what what is a, a submariner? <laughs> <laughs> submariner. I guess it's like a freaking sailor, dude. Sailor. Okay, they had but like under the water. Under sailor. Sailors. It's an under sailor. <laughs> what are we talking about? A submerged Not a sailor because that's a sail. Dude, it's still a sailor. It's a submerged sailor. <laughs> Let's look it up. It's a freaking what sailor. Is, people die. We shouldn't be laughing. Mm. Uh, what is a submarine? Not laughing at their death. No, no. <laughs> pilot called. What's a submarine? It's a submariner. We were no, right. not a submarine pilot. Wow, whatever. The hell, dude? Submarine what? Hand. Hand? Yeah. A hand? Hand cranked submarine? <laughs> hand? <laughs> What you know, like a deck hand or whatever. About? Crew. What a submarine yeah, crew call this. <laughs> uh, submariners. Bing, sometimes sailors. But I win on that one. Come I on. Mean, submariners. They're usually called submariners and sometimes sailors. Uh, sure. And that's from Quora. Very trusted source. Oh, very trusted source. Depends. No, it is. It is. This is the U.S. Pacific Fleet and submariners. And what about Chinese ones, though? Ah, it'd be like a high... <laughs> a high uh, what is it? What was it? Tech So this yeah, would be yeah, like yeah. a... Yeah, it'll be like a shui something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Just a shui you're in. Yeah, it's really <laughs> yeah, it's really in. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so they've got this nuclear sub, right? And it's prowling around the Yellow Sea. Yeah. And um, China has set up traps. What is this? Dungeons and Dragons? No, I mean, you do have submarine traps. It's yeah. like a chain and... Tecmo's deception? <laughs> chain and you anchor traps. Okay, which is... They're put there to stop, like, American and British submarines yes. from, like, sneaking around there. They don't want them anywhere near. Okay, and that's fair fair play, whatever. You got your little defense system over there. But it sucks when your own submarine gets stuck in your own trap, though, and everybody on board dies. Yeah, so the meme here, for all mm-hmm. you audios, uh, it's the classic wrestling meme where it gets worse and worse, <laughs> but it's combined with the, the like, the Incredibles? grim yeah. Incredibles meme. Yeah. It says, you you set out uh, anti-submarine defenses to ensnare snooping Western subs. And it's like, hmm, yeah. yeah. One of your defenses registers a successful interception. He goes, huh? Yeah. And it goes, it's a nuclear attack submarine. He's like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, it's your nuclear attack <laughs> submarine. He's like, oh. oh. Yeah. And then it goes, you can't rescue it. And you're too proud to ask NATO for help. Ooh. Mm. Your crew of 55 are slowly poisoned or suffocated by your own defenses. Dead. Yeah. Another day. Now, here's the thing, guys. The Chinese government's denying this. Yes. British intelligence, the leak from British intelligence that it definitely happened. And look, this has been something that's been rumbling around, rumors been rumbling around for months now. I think it happened in August. Um, so Yeah, I heard rumblings of that. Yeah. So it was speculated on a bunch of like it was speculated rumble around, and... but you know it seems fairly credible now. It's probably on it's those been... War Thunder forums. <laughs> yeah, it like it's been through. reported in mainstream media yeah. now. It's now it's out there that it's most probably the case. Yeah. Okay. That's and so it's, China though. It's devastating. Yeah, it's devastating because the problem is in China's rush to to make sure nobody finds out about this kind of thing. Yes. It actually prevents them from helping yes. people in need because they yes. just don't want anyone to know about it. So it doesn't go out there. Nobody knows about it. So yeah. anyway, yeah. 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 the idea is that they got trapped in their own um, in their own trap. Yeah. 
And then uh, Tecmo's deception style. Yeah. And then what happened is their oxygen uh, purification system, you know, failed. And then they all died of hypoxia or whatever. Insane. I literally just keep saying Tecmo's deception because I want to see if anyone in chat knows what I'm talking about. And no one does. No one does. That's fine. It's a very obscure old PlayStation game. Anyway, yeah. we have another meme. Yes, we do. It's uh, from <coughs> Geopolitics, which is yeah. Worldview. Yes. We should call Worldview Geopolitics. That's what it is. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Anyway, Taiwan opens an office in Lithuania, brushing aside China opposition. So if you guys know, Lithuania has been super Chad, Estonia as well, yeah. but uh, Czech Republic. Um, these countries in Europe have been super Chad and standing up to China in recognizing, at least partially recognizing Taiwan as some sort of entity and setting up liaison offices yeah, there. Yeah. And it's been a huge middle finger to the CCP because they're like, how dare you do that? We're going to cut you off. We're going to sanction. We're going to do all this crap to you. Yeah. They're like, we don't care. We're going to stand up for human rights. We're going to stand up for independent nations, right? Because yeah. they're small countries that got bullied by Russia. Yeah. And guess what? The Taiwan-China uh, situation is very akin to getting bullied by Russia, right? So yeah. those countries are like, we get it. We get it, Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. We're there, right? And we'll be your friend. Yeah, so it says, hey, Chi hey, hey, China, look at me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lithuania. Yeah, it's pretty it's funny. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah I like I that meme. God bless Lithuania. We'd love to go there and yeah. pay our respects. 100%. Chad's. Uh, this, I thought, was absolutely amazing because this is something we've been fighting for so long. I think this goes up not just from, like, like the public, what the public thinks yes. about China being a... The Chinese government, the CCP, has this long-term planning. They're ready for anything because they think decades ahead, whereas the West only Yeah, this is the myth. The myth is that China's got, got a plan. Yeah. The U.S. is only only thinking ahead in terms of election cycle. Everything sure. else depends on the president. This is myth, right? Yeah. But China, they got this plan out for hundreds of years, yeah, yeah. right? Decades. decades. We're way, they're way ahead of us. They've already <laughs> figured everything out. So yeah. they can suffer these short-term things or whatever, and they don't even care, right? Yeah. But this meme shows uh, China plans in decade, bros. Decades, <laughs> yeah. bros. That's actually a class of people. This is a class of people, The yeah. people that believe China plans in decades. Because yeah. when you live there, you see what a knee-jerk country that is. They just basically let it roll until something breaks or yes. doesn't work. Then they fix it. There's no real planning ahead. No, no. It's it very much in the moment. China China plans in decades, bros, watching the CCP consistently make knee-jerk reactions and employ short-term profit schemes. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, and you see this in a lot of the pro-CCP groups, like there's Western-run run groups um, on Reddit and all over the place, right? Yeah. And they have this fantasy that China is, you know, amidst all these huge problems... A lot of these people haven't been to China. Yeah. They think that it's all been planned out and it's fine. And it's not fine. No, it's not fine. It's a, it's a house of cards, dude. Yeah. We There's knew a lot that of, as soon as yeah. we moved there. There's a lot of issues. And China, you know, because they, they have the, the power of this one-party state, they can literally just bulldoze an entire village to put up a high-speed rail. And yeah. somehow people are impressed by that. Yeah. They're very good at just doing something, but they don't think about it. If you think about, like, the Three Gorges Dam, they just do it, yeah. flood a whole place out, yeah. mess with nature. A lot of things – there's not a lot of forward yeah. planning going on with what China does when it comes to – many things i think there's another thing to that too it's like you also are impressed because you're watching a curated image from a country that doesn't have press freedom it's mm. it's second to last in the world for press freedom so yeah. they've the state has created the image that it's feeding to you yeah not reality right no, it's not reality. so of course you're gonna look at that and be like that's incredible and also mm. people that go to china and they go to beijing or shanghai they they're not seeing what's really happening there yes it's kind of like a closed bubble you yeah. know what i mean yeah it's an You're interesting right. situation. Yeah, this is a very telling and very accurate meme. Yeah, I thought it was a good one. Mm -hmm. What uh, else do we have in here? Continue. Oh, it, this, yes. <clears throat> we got to talk about this. Um, you know more about this than I do. Yes. So John <clears throat> Hopkins University, it's a very, very famous medical school in America. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's a medical very, school. Yeah, very prestigious, right? Mm -hmm. Incredible. They do so much good medical research. It's amazing stuff. Right. They have this mascot mm -hmm. statue that anyone can paint at any yeah. time. It's kind of a fun thing. Yeah. Um, so before you think this is some sort of like vandalism, bad, bad vandalism, it's not. No, Anyone it's not vandalism. They want. Yeah, you can paint what you want on this thing. But so some people did like the 74th anniversary of the Communist Party of China or whatever and yeah. put a hammer and sickle on Chinese flag, right? Mm. And put it on this uh, statue, which some people thought was disrespectful. But to be fair, First Amendment, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. I think the it, irony is. I think you could have done without the hammer and sickle, maybe. I don't think you should do this, period. Sure. I'm against this, but I am in support of anyone being able to legally do this. Yes. You know, you know what I mean? Try paint the American flag on any statue in China and see what happens to you. <laughs> Give it a shot. But <laughs> yeah. don't say we told you to no, do it. No, no, no. Uh, but anyway, uh, people <laughs> struck back around Xi Bao's. Yeah, uh, and he that's hates native, that. By the way, that's native. That's mm -hmm. definitely a native 
speaker wrote that for yeah. sure. That's mm -hmm. very colloquial, like stroke. Yeah, Xi uh, Bowser basically is uh, Xi Jinping, right? Steamed bun. Yeah, Xi steamed bun. You yeah. know, like a pork bun that you buy. He went and ate them. Yeah, he ate Bowser, and like it was a big hoo ha. So they call him, uh, he hates you that. know, Xi pork bun. So like he, they ban that. Yeah, you can't call him that. Yeah, it says <laughs> F F U C K Xi Jinping, and yeah. this is Zhongguo, and then Ni Ma something. I can't see the rest, but anyway, Ni Ma. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that they people fought back and were like, "F this." We you mm. think think about this. This is how I always portray it. You can never look at all these Chinese international students as some sort of bleeding nationalist because a lot of them have gone to America to study to get away from this stuff. Yes. So they feel very threatened. But in amongst, in amongst them, you get hardcore CCP supporters. That's what I'm saying. They feel threatened. Mm. Their freedom of speech feels threatened when people are going around brandishing CCP insignia yeah. and ratting people out, getting people in trouble and getting their parents hounded back home in China. Mm. It's sucky. People get a very mm. skewed idea of Chinese people by the people that come to yeah. their countries because you have to understand that um, the people that are making it out of China to go study abroad are incredibly rich, mm. okay? The average Chinese person could never afford that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so it's only the elites. So either somebody who's very rich through business, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are rich through the Communist Party, mm -hmm. okay? And their business too is through corrupt ties too. So a lot of the students that end up overseas are somehow connected to the government anyway. A lot of them. And yeah. a lot of them are very, very not supportive of the CCP. Absolutely. Yeah. But you just have to understand that, you know, the political elite all send their children abroad. Abroad, yeah, for sure. Anyone who's made a lot of money in China usually has have, has to have communist in, body In ties. some way. Yeah. 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 You know, just to get their permits and just yes. to get their thing, they have to have all these connections. Yes. So, you know, their wealth is largely... In, part due to their connections with the Communist Party For of China. Sure. So the wealthy people that are coming abroad, you could probably find some fairly strong ties to the Communist Party. Mm. That's something you have to bear in mind. Sure. You know? Anyway, uh, But it's on. not your average Chinese no. person is no. what I'm trying to say. Correct. Yeah. Moving on, uh, we're dragging on here. Yeah, sorry. This is a long media pack today. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty funny. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is the thing I wanted to point out. Research firm says Huawei's Kira 9000S isn't true 7 nanometer chipset. But this is still not uh, finished. Yeah, yeah, they're but still I looking to, into it. Keep your eyes on this, because I think we're... Remember we said we're, this is going to develop later? Mm. Like, we'll find out the truth about this phone a little bit later, and I think it's starting to unravel. On top of that, China really shot itself in the foot with this. And by the way, by China, it's China, not Huawei. It's yeah. the Chinese government. This is supposed to beat American sh sanctions. Yeah. This has all got to do with the government. Huawei is a government company. It's a big part of China. It's big push it's got with ties, nationalism. Direct ties to it's the got government. party members yeah. own it and are on the board and yeah. in the company and all that. But never mind that. Huawei is married to the government completely. Mm. There is no separation at all. That's why it becomes uh, a point where the government will actually take hostages on behalf of Huawei. Yes. Yes, and we, things we've like seen that. the proof of that. Yeah, right? yeah. Just, so don't ever get confused. Don't let anyone try to tell you Huawei's just a company. Yeah, this mm. this uh, was floating around <clears throat> the internet. It says Huawei five G was like a hockey jersey or something. Yeah, and then somebody threw an expertise. <laughs> so yeah, I like that a lot. I was on the subreddit. <clears throat> um, moving on. We have uh, another thing. New Delhi police raid homes and offices of journalists. <laughs> there was a big sweep. Mm -hmm. and this is actually huge. Yeah, uh, which caught a. Um, this news website called News Click yeah. in India. And what it was, was it, it's alleged, it's alleged until the court case, I won't say sure, it sure. yet, but it was a basically a farm for Chinese propaganda into India and mm. abroad in English. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was massive. It wasn't sure. like a little, like a uh, little, you know, hobbyist forum. This yeah. was a massive platform yeah. in India mm. Working on behalf of China. Yeah, funded by China, yeah. Yeah, spreading propaganda everywhere. And it has ties to a lot of weird stuff that have been coming up on our radar previously. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on. We'll see what happens with the trials and stuff. But it's yeah. very interesting. We're starting to see, actually, something that came up on my radar as well, was I've seen a lot of anti-India propaganda coming out of the Western shills as yes, well. Yes, yes. And that's something to keep an eye on because there's obviously some sort of push to try yeah. to get involved in India. And I reckon we're going to see some sort of PSYOP campaign from China you know, this is probably part, probably part of it, in my opinion. I agree. Um, mm. That is trying to sway India to be part of the global South as opposed to the Western polar, polar world sure, or whatever. Sure. You know this crap they're trying to do with bricks? Yeah. yeah. I, I suspect there's a big campaign. For oh, that. for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Something to look into. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's probably the end. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, we, but we do have <clears throat> something to say. We have something special. Yes, we Kay. have the competition, the artwork competition. Now, guys, we're going to head, head right into Yamcha, but this is how it's going to work. Those of you, um, if you want to see the art competition, you'll see it. Okay, but uh, we're going directly into Yamcha, which is our Q&A section. And this is where we answer your questions and you question our answers. But today we're going to start with the art competition. We're going to leave it in because usually we cut all the questions and answers yeah. out. But on Monday, when we cut that out, we'll leave the art competition in. So even if you're not watching live now or on the weekend, you'll still get to see the art competition. All right. So time to loosen the tie. It's Friday after all. Time to relax. And we're going to start out with the art competition. You guys are going to help us choose the winner. Yes. So... What did we have? We had on the subreddit and we had on Discord for the patrons, we had mm -hmm. an art competition, yeah. meaning that you come up with art and the theme was you gotta understand China, which we have a sound oh, we do. for. You gotta understand China. And the idea was that, uh, in general, was that this art would be in relation to what a Western shill for the Chinese government would, would exemplify this, yes. right? Kind of yes. like propaganda or a parody yeah. of propaganda mm -hmm. uh, or something in relation to that. And during this competition, we saw a lot of amazing entries. We've included some of them. We're, yes. We've picked out our favorite four. Yeah, and then you're going to choose the winner of those four. We're going to have you guys vote live here. Yeah. Now, the important part of this is that the winner of this season is, by the way, it's going to be a seasonal competition. Mm -hmm. This is our, I guess, fall. Summer. This might have been the summer Summer, summer competition. Yeah, summer we'll competition. have the fall one coming up. Um, the summer competition winner of today will be in this year's Royal Rumble which is a wrestling, a live wrestling match that we have every Christmas Yes. Uh, on Patreon where we have all of the lore from our show, all mm -hmm. of the characters, including us, and all the memes and stuff. Yeah, have a big fight. And they have a big fight, and we do live commentary over the wrestling match. Yeah. The winner of today's art competition, of this summer's art, art competition, will be in the, Royal, the Rumble. Royal Rumble. Your character will be in the Royal Rumble. Yes. You have a chance to win. Number this, The runner-up today, uh, we came up with a... Uh, a consolation prize, so mm -hmm. to speak. What, what was it again? <laughs> what, the consolation yeah. prize? Well, basically, from now on, we're yeah, going to, right. in the description of all of the shows going forward, we're going to have the art competition winners always yes. there. So you'll have your winner for art no, competition number one. Yeah, it's like a Hall of Fame. And then below that, you'll have the runner-up. And yep. your name will always be there. You'll always be the second place winner of art competition number one or two or whatever. Yes. So you'll always be immortalized in every video that comes out from now on. So we'll look at some of these submissions. We didn't include everything because some of them, well, they're all great. Yeah, there some was some there was the political stuff that was funny. Yeah. But it wasn't the rules. The rules were it's got to be about shills. shills. type stuff. It's yeah. kind of like this whole... White guy or foreign guy, I should say, going to China to, shill to try and shill. Yeah. And, you know, that's basically what it is. So this is hilarious. The Harem Globetrotters. I'll just get one. us out of here. Because, look, we have a, a theory. It's kind of a proven theory yeah. um, that a lot of the people that end up shilling for the Chinese government are there because they're basically after the women. Yeah, or they a want harem. To have a harem. And a harem can yeah. be, it can symbolize something else. It can yeah. be like they just want a power, right? Yeah, they didn't the have power, power in their home country. So yes. it attracts a bad kind of person that wants to show And they, for an they want to go government. to the authoritarianism. They, they, they love authoritarians, yeah. like Gaddafi and stuff, yes. because they know that if, if they can get in that and little that's power true. circle, yeah. they can also take advantage of yes. the, the weaker people, yes. you know, the oppressed people. Yes. I, I, I yeah. do think it does attract those kind of people. Authoritarian lovers are those kind of people. Yeah, they just yeah. want to harm. So yes. we call them the harm globe globe So this is amazing. That's such I a funny absolutely thing. love this. It says, shill to fulfill your <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joint today, and I like how they've got like bras on the on the basketballs. It's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh that's one of our entries. Let's see. These are a couple of the other ones. We're just going to go through some of them. <clears throat> um, this is a again like <coughs> Xi Jinping taking off his face to reveal what China truly is underneath. Yeah. You know. What else have we got? This is not part of the competition. Yeah, it's funny, though, because your Baldur's Gate 3 character somehow got leaked. It did somehow get leaked, actually. Who did that? Um, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get past that, okay? <laughs> Never mind that. Okay, well, can you explain this, okay? So I, this had, is, I have a this, blurb. Okay, but this isn't really down to the, the rules, is it? Or it maybe is, it is. It is. It is. No, it is. Okay, it is, it is. can you explain it? Um, I have to find <laughs> the the blurb. Okay, someone made a diorama. Yeah, like a physical diorama. 
It's like what a sock or something. Yeah, apparently that is Wang Yi because he's a puppet. Oh, he's yeah, he a puppet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's talking to like a bunch of macaroni people. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there is a whole blurb here, and what is it? A possible person? Yeah. Okay, let me find it because I I did write down the blurb. Okay. Um. How do you Where search like an actual? I have no idea. You better Maybe do it fast. I know, I know, I know. I just it was kind of important. I had I had a blurb here. Okay, well, um, how about we find the blurb after we finish up with the Okay, the okay. But anyway, he made a full on I I love the fact that he made a, a physical diorama. Yeah, it's pretty pretty insane. Um a possible person, I know you're probably here in chat. Can you can you post it here? Can you post the blurb here? Yeah. In the chat. Uh, this is from Dragonella. <clears throat> um, yeah. This is amazing. I love I this. This is great. Yeah. This is a drawing from Clip Studio Paint, and this is a uh, basically a Chinese um, government girl. Yeah, that's paid to it's make like trying to look good. He's one of those Li Jingjing types or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like taking the hand of this foreigner to, you know, paint this picture. Yeah, like Get this it, is yeah. this is beautiful China. You know, mm. what I mean, look at how, how solar, solar energy and it's green sky. Yeah, and wind and like skyscrapers, and it's. <clears throat> it's exactly what we're asking and for. And then you've the got rules. the duck rat, which is great. You know the rat duck? You guys probably remember it. Ah, uh, the rat duck. Yeah, because yes. remember they found a rat's head in the food and then the, the local government, or well, the school, and then the government insisted it was a, a duck head. Yes. That it was a rat's head. Yes. So you got the rat duck in there. But this is a very awesome, indicative. it's very indicative because that's what China wants the world to see. The windmills. and. The... Yeah, they just want the world to think China is this blissful, amazing, you know, advanced look, place. Look the view. Yeah, look the view, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, so I, I think this is I a stunning one. picture. I didn't see anything particularly intelligent <laughs> around here. I, I do. I think that's an intelligent I mean, yeah, no, I'm sorry, but then <laughs> we I just wanted Dan there. I think this is great. <laughs> we should have a look the view. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we need to look the view. Anyway, so that's a, a great one. What else do we have in here? So Dragonella had a great one there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this man. is so incredible. Yeah, now, you may not have been around long enough to know about Mario, but Mario is this ridiculous dude. middle-aged dude who works for China to, to do propaganda for them, right? He's this guy. This is our best choice. At least he appears on state media all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's a, and he's the senior citizen fellow for, for the China Center for Globalization. Globalization or something. Yeah, like some kind of think tank thing. Okay, which is just Chinese propaganda. It's actually but, wicked evil. Yeah, I looked he's, it up. He's a, it's, he's no, a like, not bad him, dude. That organization's really scary. Yeah, dude. he's a bad dude yeah. too. I mean, because he's working for them. So here well, he, he's a senior fellow. Yeah, he's a senior fellow. He's a well, senior right, citizen I fellow. I think he's an ex-senior fellow. Remember I got blocked off of Twitter because I called him an old fart for yes. ageism? Yes. Anyway, the fact of the matter is... <laughs> <laughs> it's like whatever. Anyway. Yeah. He made these ridiculous propaganda videos, yeah. which were just outlandish. It had nothing to do with us. I wasn't going to say anything about him, but he said so many wrong yes. like uh, fairy tales. Yeah, because he was like, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. Yeah. Which is like, the what? wrong. Goldilocks did, had nothing to do with the big that's bad the three wolf. little pigs. So that's why the three little pigs with Goldilocks, <laughs> by the way, we had to censor it a little bit there. It was all naughty, but, I guess. Yeah, but we didn't draw this. No, Goldilocks is uh, on one of the three little pigs there. And then he also said, and I'm going to tell you the, the tale about the, the scorpion who gave the, the frog a ride on its back, which it's the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Because the... The adage. Yes, the adage is because you know, the frog swims, right? Yes. And so the, the scorpion needs a ride. Yeah, so there's this like fable that the scorpion needs a ride over the yeah. you know, over the river. And so the frog says, Hop on my back if you promise not to sting me. But the scorpion stings him anyway and they both drown. Yeah. But he got it mixed up and he said the scorpion gave the frog a ride on its back, which is hilarious, because that would never work. That's not regarded the, for us. You know what the stupid thing is, is because he's doing this very low rent propaganda for chinese media this by the way was on chinese tv yeah that was on tv they aired yeah. these adages these quotes this thing but because china's propaganda is so like low it's tier so low, low class nobody fact checked no so he's saying all these wrong things yeah. but nobody was like hey you know that doesn't make sense because yeah. they don't there's understand no, english no proofreading yeah I proofread my own freaking videos. And then he got mad when we talked about it. So he made a video and he was like, they will sow what they reap. <laughs> about us. <laughs> they will sow what they reap. So yeah, I guess. Oh my gosh. And I, and I quote as well by the, the yeah. author of this, uh, the artist of this. Yeah. 
he his quote was, "I'd like to personally take it upon myself to destroy them." I mean, of Mario course, said that about us. Yes, yeah, he'd like to personally take it upon himself to destroy us. He's a terrible, terrible That's dude. That's pretty bad thing to say. I'd say. I think I think I take offense to that. I take offense to that too. You don't say that you want to destroy someone. Anyway, destroy so the child. <laughs> I think this is hilarious. Okay, Very so funny. um. That's that's that one. What do we got next? Uh, just some <laughs> some runners up, uh, yep. some AI stuff. We're actually not going to allow AI art in the future. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be hand drawn, and it doesn't matter if it looks bad because, as you can see, we it's allow things humor. that look bad in the competition yeah, too. For sure, it's about the humor. <laughs> this, you got a hand stand trying to. I don't quite get this I one. I guess it's. Do that, you get this one? Maybe you could try and I don't, explain it. I don't. Um, I think you know what I think it is. I actually think that this is a picture of you gotta understand China guy. You remember you remember Shinsha Dan Dan? Yeah. He's he's right here in the in the uh what's it called? In the you gotta understand. Yeah, that's him. I yeah. think that's insinuating that that's him. Yeah, I mean if you look at it, that kind of looks like him. He's got the blonde hair. I don't know. It looks like Xi Jinping's a trust turkey or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Moving on. Yeah, moving on. I have a feeling that one won't win the competition, but it's still great that it was, you know, included. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. You've got like Grand Theft Auto Understand China, and it's got, you know, all the typical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got uh, Miss Wow, Sarah AI, you know, this one. Yay, young girl and beautiful. So, I kind of I kind of like that. It's pretty funny. It's got Tofu Drake buildings in it's, it's got funny. IE's dancing. There's a lot to unpack in that one. Yeah. yeah it's gutter oil. This one is, uh, it's got a. I guess a bunch of like shill people or something in yeah. it. And it says, come to China for all of it. And it lists all the bad things, like human rights atrocities. Yeah, 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 stuff. yeah. So, That's a very like poignant piece. Yeah, looks like it, it comes out of Time magazine or something. Yeah, it could be like a magazine. <laughs> this is some 3D art. Winston Matt reacting to Chinese AI, um, <laughs> which is pretty funny. This is us talking about Lube Eagle. Yeah, and, Lube Eagle and yeah, the Turing. That was so ridiculous. It was. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a clever take. On oh, I things. love this one. <laughs> Super, super shill size CCP's, CCP's frosted, frosted flakes. Like there, great. <laughs> I mean, come on. No, this is so this, funny. this is great art. This I, is so funny. yeah. That's that's pretty special. The thing is, I, lo I out of all of the shills, I wouldn't even call Jonty a shill yeah. because he's doing like an internship for like China Daily or something, and he's never done Uyghur genocide. No, that. no, he's he didn't do that. No. He's he's a lovable. He guy. just did like a, a lot of um. Olympic shill stuff. Yeah, and whatever. This is a lovable yeah. image of him, I think. Yes, this I like it. Great. You know what? You, you got to look at the details, though, because if yes. you look at the flakes, those are Rick flakes. Yeah, those are Rick Wow, Rick's so flakes. good. <laughs> I like mean, can you, can you see? You know what I mean? <clears throat> wow, that's a little too much for me. I, I mean, honestly, when you look there, that's Rick in the bowl. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that funny? Um, like, the thing is, it gets funny and funny if you read all the details. Like, down there, it's like zero grams integrity etc etc yes. per serving there's a lot of cool stuff in there it's a ccp white monkey something or other down there i love it it's yes. very good the user got um cut out i guess it was hal it was hal yeah oh, this yeah? is from hal okay <clears throat> hal is uh the artist i don't know why i got cut off yeah weird anyway um John T there in the classic CCP Frosted Flakes. And there's some really good details. You'd want to look at that close. Yeah. Uh, vitamin C cringe, you know. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. Wow, so good wow, sources so good of source. vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, this is just such a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so good. That's a great yeah. one. Okay, so we picked our four favorite. Mm -hmm. So, um, guys, we're going to now put a list. It's one, two, three, four. Yeah. So number one, and you, you, you're going to, uh, yeah, just maybe write the description rather than yeah. just the number. All right, so, one, Heron. Yeah. <clears throat> so you guys are going to vote. You're going to choose the winner of this competition. It's not up to us. It's up to you, the audience. Yeah, we're not going to sway. There's no election no. interference here. No, there's none of this. You know, I kind of like to sometimes do this occasionally. This is our best choice. Not, there's none of that None today. of that. None no, of that no, no, today. none of that today. Okay. This is entirely up to you. <clears throat> uh, best. Best. Art. Yeah. So the number one is the Harem Globetrotters. Okay. Okay. Number two is this... Uh, beautiful, beautiful China. Yeah, Beautiful China. Call it that. Mm. Three. And number three is... <laughs> they will sow, <laughs> sow what they <laughs> reap. <laughs> so reap is number three. Yeah. And number four is... 
Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. So this is the best star. Remember, the winner of this is going to be on this year's Royal Rumble on Christmas. Yeah. And the, the runner-up runner up will be immortalized in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. In our description of every video going forward <clears throat> for the China show. Yeah. And we'd, li- we'd love to encourage you to actually join in in these art competitions because they're fun. And remember, you don't need to be like an amazing artist to enter. It's just no. really nice to have people actually participate. Just, yeah, like it's part of the show. It's yeah. fun, guys. Yeah. You yeah. guys did such a good job. Mm-hmm. This hail one, which I don't, we can't manipulate the vote here. You gotta like either play them all. Or I, I love all of them. I love all of them. E- kind of equally in a yeah. way because they're all different styles. Have you noticed that? Yes. Now, one thing I do want to say <clears> is <throat> that this vote is anonymous. So like you should vote. Yeah. Definitely vote. Like if you have an account Please. and you're logged in right now, vote for one of these pictures. Yep. Uh, because we need to immortalize these. I, I think that is absolutely gorgeous. No, I think all we're of them are fantastic. We're putting that up in the office. Yeah. Because it's just such a good piece to have. Yeah. No, yeah. I think we're going to put all of these up in the office. <laughs> I don't want I, that in my office. Dude, I love that, but I don't want it in my office. That's going right above your desk, bro. Oh. <laughs> it's a haunting. It's, yeah. The, what's the green brain about? I don't know. I don't know what that green, maybe it's smog or something. I don't know. I can't, I, there's only something going on. Yeah, there's there. something with that, but. Uh, puff and puff. I love this. Yeah, it's puff like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is funny. Hell, that, yeah. is, that is a good one. All right, anyway. Yeah. And then number four is John T. Flakes. CCP's yes. Russell Flakes. There. Great. <laughs> So, uh, mm-hmm. make sure you vote. I'm going to cut it off at 1,000 votes. I think that'll give plenty of time. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. 1,000 votes would be plenty. Let's do it, guys. So, make sure you're voting. Make sure. It's it's anonymous. So we don't know who you voted for. You don't have to worry yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, this is the fun part of the show is that it's interactive. Mm. It's interactive. Yeah. I, I think that beautiful China one, though, could be like a, a piece of art that you like, you know, you yeah. can sell. Yeah, yeah. It's really Whereas the other of... ones are great. They're incredible. And they're very apt for the show. Stop, but it'd be hard. stop trying to like No, no, no. But it would people. be hard to explain to a layperson yes. why there's a guy saying up and pub with a green <laughs> brain behind him. I don't. It's got character. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. It's, it's funny. This this is just so That's true, so, though. So Isn't nice. it so true? It's so true. Yeah. Here, I'm globe the, the one thing is that... The the, the men are maybe a little bit too attractive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're usually not that handsome. No. The girls are cute, though. They made the girls cute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's to be fair, that's not actually what happens. This is the fantasy. It's the fantasy, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If I shill for the CCP, I'll get yeah. here. Excellent. So are we close to the... Uh, the uh, yes, here? we have crossed the threshold. And guys, I'm about to pull the poll, and I'll do it in a countdown. I'll do it in a five. Mm-hmm. And a four. Mm-hmm. And a three... Two, one. I have to do this because there's like a massive delay. <laughs> Stop dragging it on. What's the winner? I have to wait. I'm counting down in my preview image. Oh. Okay. Now I can do it. Okay. The finish, finish line. Let's see. Uh, the Frosted Flakes won. Very clearly. Wow, seriously. By, by a massive margin of 48% of our votes. Oh, wow. Incredible. I mean, it, it is a really fantastic... It's uh, very funny. Nice. It has a great attention to detail. I think it fits right in the theme. Yeah. I think uh, the, the subject is a good sport. I think you would get a chuckle out of oh, this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I this think is it's great. This is flattering. If I were him, I would actually put that on my wall. I would wall. have that as a t-shirt. That's I think it's so awesome. funny. Yeah. Uh, beautiful China came in a great second place yep. uh, with 20%. Can you... Put yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring it up. Uh, beautiful China. I'm showing the beautiful scenery and the fantasy of what China actually looks like. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's... that's <laughs> Give me a yeah, I know. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful China get in second place. Okay, um, second place. Harem Globetrotters in first pla- or in third place, and All then right. So Reap was in last place. I guess I'm a, bit, a bit too niche. <laughs> I'm surprised, you know? You have to be a diehard <laughs> China show fan to understand that. No, I, I think it's... <clears throat> I'll be honest. I think that that's actually what I would have chosen, too. Oh, okay, interesting. That's oh, in this order. Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. Oh, yeah. we're, you're not supposed to put in your what? You're not supposed to put in your bias here. No, it's I can after the fact. Oh, you're saying okay. So can I put in my what I think? Yeah, was yeah, the best? sure. I think uh, this is our best choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know. That's what he would want. I think beautiful China <laughs> was probably the my favorite. I think it gives me a certain feeling. Mm. It's a weird feeling of like, uh, like 
this is definitely how things go. And it's also a beautiful piece of art, but it's also like a feeling of like regret. Like, yeah. holy shit. Like, mm. it is a lot of facade. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. It's a real uh, if, you, if you want to put it in that point of view, it's from yeah. an artistic point of view. That's my favorite. But yeah. I'm just saying... Uh, a lot from, of from 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 a China show. <laughs> this is the funniest. <laughs> I, like hands down, this yeah. is like the most absurd thing yeah. ever, and it's so funny. It's an absurd <laughs> depiction of an absurd man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Flakes. What flakes is a great. There's so many beautiful little details in the flakes, and you guys it's, gotta look at it. It's like really the, the charity perfect. on the bottom. Yeah. Like the chill charity or whatever. Mm -hmm. and like everything. Every details in there. It's really it's, funny. It's really good. Like it's, it's got all the details. The serving thing. size instead of per serving, it's per production. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, this yes. is like. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's so wow. So a lot good. of thought went into that. Yeah. yeah. And the Harem Globetrotters is great because I like that they took one thing that we've harped on about. Wow. And made so a good. Whole lot of art about it. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, um, great job, guys. Really Thank appreciate you. you guys. That was really a lot of fun. We do have another art competition right now coming up. Um, yeah. The fall. It's the fall one. So we'll probably cut it off in uh, leading up to winter. Yes. So you guys got like a couple months. You can put some pumpkin spice in there if you like. It doesn't have to be fall related necessarily. Uh, I believe Doc has the rules. Mm -hmm. Go over to the Discord slash the pinned Reddit sticky mm -hmm. on the subreddit. Get the rules for the next competition. You, Dragonella, are in the Hall of Fame forever. And you, Hal, are in this Dude, year's Royal, Royal Rumble. Rumble. So you have to tell us what, what you, you look, look like. <laughs> because yeah. we had Doc Slothington in the one of the Royal Rumbles, and we don't know what he looks like. So he ended up looking like some sort of like <laughs> poncho-wearing weird weird <laughs> safari man, old yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. It's so, very funny. It's very funny. Yeah, anyway. Great. Yes. So, Hal, please reach out to us. Let mm -hmm. us know what you look like or what you want to be represented as. Yes. And we'll make sure you're in this year's Royal Rumble. Or for whoever makes the royal rumble yeah uh, oh, this anyway. is fantastic thank you to everyone who participated by yeah, the way a lot of fun. it was really awesome we're looking forward to the next next competition and now it's time for the q a stuff so yes. oh what by do we the got? way it says frosted fakes not frosted. oh flakes. yeah it does it says frosted fakes which is the most even better delicious irony even better yes. yeah every time you look you see something you know yeah something else it's so good yeah. yeah so good it's epic it's epic anyway yeah mm -hmm. Frosted fakes of China. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't, I'm definitely putting that up on the wall. Yes. Yes. Good job, Hal. Mm. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan <clears throat> says, it's my birthday. I demand a ball sack. Okay, you get one. Hey, hey, ball sack. Hey, that was a bit too modern. Ball sack. <laughs> Peter Ballsack, yeah. otherwise known as Peter <clears throat> Dazak, who helped muddy the waters when it came to the origin <clears throat> story of COVID. Pablo Skate, c milk mm. <clears throat> Ever since you mentioned on Xiao Ban Ho, I've been dying to know. What was your aggressive skating setup? I had some razors with some amazing aftermarket grind plates on them. I had two smaller wheels.